Western ceremonial magic comes in two flavors, the left-hand path of demonology side and the angelology side of the right-hand path. And today we are going to be talking about the angels that are most commonly talked about on that right-hand path. I am Dave the Amateur Magus on this channel. I talk all about the mechanics behind ceremonial magic, occultism, esotericism, and the mechanics behind everything you can find within a dusty old grimoire. If you enjoy what I do here and you want to support the channel, link to the Patreon in the description where you can get exclusive access to content that I try to aim at a little bit more higher level than what I have on here on the channel. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe down to the Patreon link in the description. And if you are already watching this on Patreon, as early access is one of the things I offer, you have my thanks for your continued and ongoing support. Let's get into it. There are a few angels that are talked about multiple times over, so let's get the big three out of the way. The big three angels that are talked about all the time when it comes down to both, you know, ceremonial magic and just contemporary religion, really, are Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Michael is going to be the most popular and well-known. He is said to, in some canons, be the leader of all angels. And his name roughly translates to one who is like God. Michael is given triple duty as being the Archangel of Hode, the Archangel of Fire, and the Archangel of the Sun. Now, it might be weird. Why is he Hode? The Sun is supposed to be in Tipperath. It's because... Psychopomps are placed in Hode, and psychopomps are those who lead the souls of the deceased to their specific afterlife. Michael is supposed to be doing that, so that is why he is in Hode. But he is also corresponding to the sun because he is like God, he is not God, he's like God, and things that are like God usually get corresponded to the sun because son of God, Jesus, etc. That's not the actual reason, but moving on. The way to call up the Archangel Michael is going to be the Seven Penitential Psalms. This method was determined and was given to Dr. John Dee as part of his preliminary work before Edward Kelly, actually. So this is a method for evoking the Archangel Michael. Typically, the Archangel Michael is going to be commonly used for, um, you're going to commonly call him up for protection. The Archangel Michael is said to be the best protective spirit out of all spirits, just full stop, that is his, like, if you need protection, there is no better protection than Michael. So, that should be noteworthy. The next one up is going to be Raphael, this is the healer of God. This is the, um, Raphael is similarly to Michael placed in Tipperath, because healing is Tipperath, Mercury, because healing is Mercury as well, and Air. And you'll notice that it is commonly intellect and high intellectual pursuits. Interestingly enough, depending on if you believe this or not, it is said that the spirit that was assisting Mathers and Westcott with their formulation of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was said to be a alternative name of Raphael. So, make of that what you will. Raphael is going to be most often invoked for healing, Raphael is very good for healing magic. However, Raphael is also good for helping you and assisting you with learning new magical techniques and new magical spells. Now, this is going to be a thing that Raphael is quite good at doing. So, if those of you are looking for magical techniques that you are probably not aware of, Raphael is usually the one to go to. And the final one is Archangel Gabriel. Archangel Gabriel is usually correspondent to Yesod, the moon, and the element of water, all things watery. And their name roughly translates to the strength of God. When it comes down to Archangels, Gabriel is going to be the one that you are going to call up the least in ceremonial magic. Not because they're not good at what they do, it's just that depending on the mode you call them in, they change a lot more than the other... Th two Archangels we've mentioned previous. Archangel Gabriel will sometimes talk totally normally, and they will communicate very clearly and very crisply. Other times, they only show you symbols as their method of communication. It's kind of like in Transformers, when Bumblebee only could talk in radio excerpts. It's kind of like that, but it's like GIF vision and symbolism in your head. 
That's why I know a lot of occultists that I have talked to personally don't like calling up Gabriel often. But Gabriel is more often used for divination and being able to see all psychic phenomenon more clearly and more easily. However, I would say that calling up Archangel Gabriel is not something I do very often, so I just want to get that disclaimer out of the way. Now, we've just talked about three angels, and there are four angels of the quarters, so the final angel of the quarters is going to be the Archangel Uriel, or Ariel, depending on your pronunciation. They are said to be the Archangel of Earth, and they are said to be a uncorruptible and stable spirit. They are able to assist you if you need to simplify things, or if you need magical practice and more stable, more stability to your magical practice, I should say. Now, when it comes down to the four Archangels of the Quarters, they are going to be the angels that you are probably going to be working with the most if you are doing ceremonial magic, just because you call them up in the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, and they are the elemental archangels. So that's why you're going to call them up the most. That being said, there are 10 Kabbalistic Spheres, and those Kabbalistic Spheres all have an Archangel associated with them. So let's climb up the tree and talk about all of these, shall we? The Archangel Sandalphon is the Archangel of Malkuth. They are correspondent to the world of Brea in Malkuth, and they are the Archangel associated with that sphere. Now, when it comes down to the Archangel Sandalphon, I've called them up multiple times. Uh, Sandalphon is great. I have never had a problem with the Archangel Sandalphon. What they are useful for is assisting you with guidance on your magical path and providing you stability. Now, I've also seen that some people will call up the Archangel Sandalphon for kind of stability and assisting them with manifesting things in the physical world. I've also noticed that that is very, very strong. Like, that is a very strong trait that the Archangel Sandalphon has. But usually, when it comes to the demeanor of the Archangel Sandalphon, Archangel Sandalphon is cold but loving. They're like a teacher who wants you to succeed and they know you can do it, but you keep fucking up, so they have to be like, come on, you know you can do it. That's kind of the demeanor of Sandalphon. Going up a sphere, we get to the Archangel Gabriel. This is the Archangel Gabriel of the Sphere of Yesod, and Archangel Gabriel, as I've mentioned before. Um, usually when it comes to Archangel Gabriel, when you are calling them up as the Archangel of the particular sphere, this is where they become much more, you know, this is where they usually, when you call them up as the Archangel of the Moon or Yesod, they are more likely to communicate in clear, concise manners. So it'll be like a standard evocation instead of having to play Pictionary with an Archangel. Next up is the Sphere of Hode, which is ruled by the Archangel Michael. This is going to be, uh, this is always a little confusing, so the Archangel Michael really doesn't change that much, but he has a much more focus on practical magic when it comes down to being called up as the Archangel of Hode, I've noticed. Now, when it comes down to, oh, how is the Archangel Michael the Archangel of the Sphere of Hode when he's also the Archangel of the Sun, which is in Tippereth, um, that is because the Archangel Raphael is doing the opposite. The Archangel Raphael, which we will talk about when we get back to Tippereth, is the Archangel of Mercury, and the Archangel of Tippereth. And the reason for this is because they correspond to what the planet means a lot better than they do the planet's sphere, because the planet is not actually the sphere. It is a lower octave of the divine nature of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. So when it comes down to it, the angels are the more you know, the more pure form of what the sphere is supposed to represent. So the sphere of Tippereth is supposed to be healing, which is why the healer of God, Raphael, is there. And you have Hode, which is, depending on how you interpret it, this is where language comes in, and this is where we have, you know, this is where we have a lot of the more, what we would consider human elements. So that's why we have the he who is like God, because man was created in the image of God. This isn't the actual reason, but this is a close enough approximation. When it comes down to it, Michael, always great to call up Michael. Same way you do it as before. You just ask him to come and you declare that he is the Archangel of Hood before you do it. And then that's usually how that works. 
Next up, we have Netzach. Uh, Netzach is the Sphere of Venus, and the angel here is going to be the angel Anael or Haniel. Now, uh, there is an interesting thing that occurred with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, where there were a bunch of corrupted Hebrew names floating around. Like, Haniel is not the traditional name of the... Uh, it's not the traditional name of the angel Aniel, but for some reason it got flown around and it was a corrupted version of the name. So what did the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn do because these names were being treated as angels? Well, what they did was they turned those into regular angels and they used the older name as the Archangel. So the Archangel Aniel, or Anael, is going to have the same sigil and uh, they're going to have more or less the same job as Haniel, except I've noticed that the the difference between the two is that one is much more down to business, much more prudent, much more conservative, and much more cordial. And the angel Haniel always shows up looking like a fucking anime character. So that is the major difference between those two. They are both usually used for love, and I have had the worst experience of working with any angel, working with the angel Haniel, so be careful what you're asking for, because even the angels of Venus can be just as terrifying as the angels of Mars. Next up, we have Tippereth, and this is going to be where we have Raphael once again. This is where he is most often going to be called up as the angel of healing. Swift healing, because also corresponding to Mercury and, you know, Mercury and the element of air, so swift healing is usually why you're calling up Raphael. Then we have the Sphere of Gevura, which has, depending on which source you're looking at, there is a couple different archangels that correspond to this. Samael in some translations, but usually Samael gets shifted to the clip-off. Um, there's Kamael or Samael. Really, Kamael is going to be the one that you're going to see in a lot of ceremonial magic books, and that's the one I'm going to reference. Kamael, depending on what you are dealing with, I have seen Kamael as a Spartan warrior angel, and I have also seen people saying that they are the softest, most loving angel that you can ever see because they are the embodiment of brotherly love. I've personally only worked with the warrior aspect of Kamael, but apparently the brotherly love aspect is common for those of you who are not expecting the warrior aspect of Kamael. Kamael is typically called up for martial qualities and for martial pursuits. That is usually what the Archangel Kamael is called up for, as well as increasing physical strength. Now, when it comes down to the opposite sphere of Gevora, we have the Sphere of Mercy, or Hesed, as it will be called in every Kabbalistic literature. Now, the Archangel of has said is typically going to be Zadkiel, with Sachiel being the Archangel of Jupiter. Now, when it comes to these two, usually they're going to be called up for Jupiterian pursuits. However, I find that um, most people are going to call up Sachiel for the Jupiterian, like money spells, expand, influence, that kind of thing. But when it comes down to it, I think that Sachiel should not be the only angel you interact with. I think you should at least call up Zadkiel at least once, Zadkiel being the ruling archangel of the sphere of Jupiter. So make of that what you will. Going up and passing the abyss, which there is no angels for the abyss, we have the first of the supernals, which is the sphere of Bina and the sphere of Saturn. Cassiel is the angel of Saturn, and he looks like the angelic equivalent of the Grim Reaper and is associated with all the Saturnian things. However, there's also Zafkiel, who is the archangel of Bina proper, and I have only seen her as a she, and she usually appears as an angel with black hair and long black wings and black everything, really. In my experience, she is quite good at enabling you to gain more power and magical proficiency. However, when it comes down to what she can do thaumaturgical-wise, she is the best at instilling order and manifesting things that you have not considered as an option. Um, she is said to be one of the few angels who is capable of beholding God directly, and 
as such, she is quite powerful in her skill set, and she is a force to be reckoned with. Now, going up a sphere to the sphere of Chokma, which is the sphere of wisdom, we have the Angel of Secrets and the Angel of Mysteries, Raziel. I typically don't talk about Raziel. Usually. So, Raziel is the Angel of Secrets, and Raziel is quite good at allowing you to learn magical techniques that are... strange. I can't really describe them because they are mysterious and I'm bound by oaths, but Raziel is quite good at enabling people to learn various different types of magic that are out of the ordinary. Raziel is also quite good at learning secrets, so if you are trying to learn what happened or some kind of secret, you can go to Raziel for that. Going up a sphere, we have the Archangel Metatron, who is the Ascendant Enoch for the Kabbalistic sphere of Kether. Now, this is going to be the angel that is uh, the ascended Enoch. This is the scribe of God. Now, usually when it comes down to calling up the Archangel Metatron, this is not going to be done by most ceremonial magicians. And the reason for this is because in every instance where I have personally evoked the Archangel Metatron, uh, whenever I evoke the Archangel Metatron, it feels like a flashbang is going off in my magical circle, and it is just quite frankly unpleasant because of the raw divinity. Now, typically, you can do, like, mild invocations of the Archangel Metatron. There is a ritual called the Adjuration of Metatron, which is a banishing. But, generally speaking, the Archangel Metatron is going to be most commonly known for assisting with magical path and dedication to what the Lord wants you to do. Generally speaking, of the angels on this list, I would say that they are all worth calling for their own specific reasons. However, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Some are more worth calling than others in modernity. Like, calling up the Archangel Michael is going to be very commonly used. Calling up the Archangel Metatron is not so much, unless you are one of those people who thinks closest to divinity is the absolute most important thing but I'm not one of those people, so yeah. Now, in addition to these, there are actually, like, multiple different angelic choirs, one of which is the Shem Ham Farash, one of which is the Anabakoak, and the Deccan Angels, and the Zodiacal Angels, which I have not covered here, but we will cover them at a future time. So, hopefully everyone enjoyed this little, very much not exhaustive catalog of the Archangels and their jobs and roles. Hope everyone is having a good day. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better. Take it easy. See you next time.